So this says geometry semester two. It's the six, unit six, surface area. It's the second lesson, surface area of triangular prisms and slant TPs. I'd rather that say oblique triangular prisms, but I think I was running out of room and so typed an abbreviation there. Slant means oblique or, you know, sort of pushed over to the side. This is on creatormath.com under the geometry tab. You might have to put in creatormath.weebly.com. Copy the following problems into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with the notes for those pages. Don't forget the notes, you guys. It explains a lot about surface area that I'm not going to explain when doing the problems, but I am going to use the information. So, again, it's on creatormath.com under the geometry tab. So, given the following... Here's what we got. Given the following three-dimensional shape, what's the surface area? So, this is called a triangular prism. Why? The end of it is a triangle, and then it's stretched out three-dimensionally, right? So there's a triangle at the top, triangle at the bottom, and then it's a three-dimensional shape. So, um, what is surface area? Surface area is, say you unfolded this whole thing. What would it look like if you unfolded it? It might look like a panel here. That'd be part of the triangle. A panel here, that'd be part of the triangle. And a smaller panel. And then a piece up here, right, that kind of went like this. And a piece down here that would kind of go like that. And so what have we got here? We've got one, two, three, four, five surfaces. And surface area is the area inside these boundaries of the whole thing. Now we're going to break it into pieces so we can do it a little bit simpler. I don't know how to calculate the area of the whole thing. But I know how to calculate the area of a rectangle, a rectangle, a rectangle, and a triangle, and a triangle. By the way, this rectangle and this rectangle are the same dimensions. This triangle and this triangle are the same dimensions. Right? So let's see if we can add up what this is. Um, interestingly enough, what's the surface area? The perimeter of the shape times 2. So... They do an interesting thing, like I'm just, I'm looking at the answer and then kind of explaining that, you guys. So here's our answer, right? The perimeter of the end shape. So the end shape is a triangle. How do you figure out the perimeter of the triangle? You just go around and figure out the length of this thing, right? Oh, okay. It's my cat jumping up on the table. Um... So, they tell us some things here. Um, well, on this one, they're just explaining this, I guess. They're not even giving us dimensions. Perimeter of the triangle is just the length of this side, the length of this side, the length of the side added. Add all that up, the perimeter length times the height of the shape, plus 2 times the area of the end shape. So, they're going to take this whole distance here, multiply it by the height, and get this rectangle's area here. Then, they're going to get one of these triangles and do the area of that. So the area of one of the triangles, sorry I call it a rectangle, it's a triangle, and multiply it by two because there's one here, one here. And now we're going to have the surface area of the whole thing. I kind of see where they're headed now with this. Let's see what the next problems are they give us. Now they're going to contrast this with an oblique uh, triangular prism. Oblique just means it's pushed over. So notice that the pair, the the ends of the three-dimensional shape are still parallel, right? These two lines are parallel. In other words, they took the shape that was this way and they pushed it over. But they cut the bottom and the top bases flat and parallel to each other. We definitely have what we call a perpendicular height here. So it looks like what they're trying to do is just sort of explain to us that even though this is oblique, look at what they gave us. The perimeter of the end of the shape times the perpendicular height plus two times the area of the end of the shape. They've shown us that as long as we're dealing with a perpendicular height, the formula for an oblique surface area is exactly the same as the formula for a non-oblique surface area of a triangular prism. And I think that is a cool contrast because it looks like it ought to be so much more difficult given the fact that it's now been slanted or pushed over or is oblique. When in that, and as long as we're using a perpendicular height, it's the exact same formula to find surface area of this three-dimensional shape. All right, let's go to the next one. Given the following three-dimensional shape, if the base of the triangle is three feet 
and the height a, so here's a height a of the triangle is 6 feet. So this is 6 feet. The base of the triangle back here, from here to here, they said was 3 feet. And the perpendicular height of the prism, so perpendicular height, oh, they draw it over here. It's, it's kind of um, hard to see, is 10 feet. All right. And the perimeter of the triangle is, oh, cool, they give us the perimeter of the triangle at the end as 17 feet. What is the surface area? Well, we already have the perimeter of the end shape, which is 17 feet. Okay, and let's keep the units in there, actually. 17 feet, let's do it a little bit clearer. 17 feet is the perimeter of the end times the perpendicular height. We already said that was the formula for the surface area. So the perpendicular height is 10, All right? And then we are going to add to that two times the area of the triangle. So a triangle area is one half base times height, right? So we're going to have a one half in here. We have a base of this thing, which is three feet. Let's keep the units in there and a height of the triangle. Again, it's not the slanted um, distance here. It is the perpendicular height to the base is six feet. If I'm reading this right, and that's the way it looks. So I'm going to go with that, all right? So one, 17 times 10, I like that, 170. Feet times feet is feet squared. I like that because it's an area. The two cancels here and here. Three times six is 18. And feet times feet is feet squared again. So add these up, I get 18 and 170, 188, and the feet squared just add. So I think the surface area is 188 feet squared. Ah, they don't even multiply it out. They just go with the base calculation. Look, 17 times 10, 2 times 1 half base times height. It's exactly what we had right there. All right. So they gave us the surface area calculation method twice, and now they're just giving us two problems to plug into that. So let's go again. We need the perimeter of the triangle at the top. Do they give us a perimeter? And the perimeter of the triangle is 20 feet. So we have 20 feet times the perpendicular height. Do they tell us the perpendicular height? And the height of triangle A, that's here, and the perpendicular height of the prism is 10 feet. So this thing equals 10 feet. So this is times 10 feet. This is going to be added to two times the area of the triangle here. Do they give us a base? Oh, I see where they're headed with this. They're using the same numbers, and therefore our calculation on the slanted triangular prism will be the exact same calculation as the non-oblique uh, triangular prism. So one-half base, which they tell us the base of the triangle is three, three feet. And they left units in here, too. I like that. Good for them. Um, times six feet here. And so they're just asking us to confirm the calculation, not even to make it. We went ahead and calculated as 188 feet squared as the surface area of the triangle, triangular prism. All right, so... This goes back to make sure you're in the right place for this. It's geometry semester two. It's the unit on surface area, number six, and it's the lesson number two, which is surface area of triangular prisms and slant triangular prisms practice. And it's on creatormath.com under the geometry tab.